Hi and welcome back to Sarah's Texture Crafts. Um, today we're going to be continuing our carding uh, tutorials. We had a look at the carder and the different drums and how it works and the different fibres that you can use with your drum carder. Today we are going to be looking at processing tops onto your drum carder and the methods by which you should um, pass it through the feeding area and onto this main drum. I've already started to fill the main drum with white and I've done this purely so that we can see the fibres as they come on. Uh, so I have a selection of different tops here, um, lots of different colours. I've got one that's blended as well just so you can see how different colours work together and this isn't necessarily the best mix of colours um, but it will give you an idea of um, striping effects that you could create um, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to take the green one first. And when you get your tops, you might find, or your roving, you might find that they're slightly compacted. So I always try to um, tease them apart. Um, not fully pulling them apart, but teasing them apart gently. So you're loosening and aerating, if you like, some of the fibres. Um, as that's quite a thick width, I'm going to just tear that in half. And we're going to work with this piece. Now, now that you've sort of aerated it and separated those fibres a bit, place that onto your feeding tray. Take the handle and gently pass that through. And you'll see that that turns nicely onto your wheel and covers the whole area. If you wanted colour in just one place, let's try with the purple. So you see you need to sort of tease that apart because that's quite compact that one so I'll tear that in half I might also break that off as well so tease that apart if you want uh, just this colour in one area maybe not tease it apart too much or maybe separate it a bit further so that you've got just a small piece to work with and place that through in your desired area and pass that through and let the drum card to do its work Never clamp down and hold this fibre too tightly because uh, you'll end up pulling the uh, teeth on your uh, actual drums. So as you can see, that's creating a bit of a stripe. So let's see if we can build this up a bit. Maybe some pink. Again, separate it. Um, maybe we'll put the pink here. Let's see that line of colour. And the great thing with drum carding is that you can add as much of one colour or one fleece as you like or um, you know bits of exotic fibres and that kind of thing so you're creating your own unique art bat. Um, I mean you could of course just card from a fleece directly uh, which I might show you in a later video and work just directly with that. So again separating as you go and placing your colour. You'll find when you come to spin or felt this that by separating the bat into uh, to layers or pre-drafting it or just spinning directly from the bat that every sort of length of, of um, yarn that you produce or felt that you make is a slightly different coloration to the next piece which, which I think is really fantastic and that's why I enjoy working with art bats. Let's try a bit of this blend. Blends, of course, will be distorted um, the more you, you use colour. Of course, they will become um, distorted onto the belt. I mean, you can see the lilac is not quite so intense as it was as a bat on its own. Um, and you also get colour, your own colour blending as well. You see where the, that sort of rosy pink colour has um, blended in with the, um, with the lilac there. Okay, let's get this piece on. If you notice um, a piece is sort of quite compact at this end on the feed tray, don't continue to wind it on. Instead, separate it. And then let that pass through. Maybe take a bit more green now, just simply missing some of that. And carry on. A bit more purple. And you, 
can go as long as you like with your length of colour. Obviously, the, the longer the length of colour you use, um, the more of that colour you will have in one space on your bat. Um, so there's no sort of specific length of fibre you need to take to the wheel. Um, there we go. Working that on. Do a bit more of that pink. And again, this is a little bit compacted, so tease that apart. As the drum gets more full, you'll notice it's slightly harder to um, turn the handle and card. Don't worry too much, it's just a sign that your bat is nearly ready. So carry on. And the trick when you're using colour on your drum card particularly is that if you find you get to a stage where something looks too, um, too bright, too in your face, then get a lighter colour or a white and just tease that so it's um, quite open and able to, to sort of cover that whole drum area. Pass that through and the moment you start adding white you start to dull down those colours so the pink's not maybe quite so intense um, or it's not too lilac um, and again likewise you know if you find you get to a point where you think oh my god that's too insipid you can just take a length of, of bright colour take that to your your drum pass that through making sure to tease that apart so that you know it's never compact when you take it onto the wheel, uh, onto the drum, sorry, and, and carry on like so. You'll find as your, your drum gets more full that you get these sort of, these bits that um, I, I sort of call them birds if you like, and they, they just come away, uh, and that's waste. Don't throw that away. Instead, Put that to one side and maybe you can use that on your next bat. So there's no waste with drum carding as well, which is why I think it's such a great craft. You'll also notice that you are starting to get a build up on this first drum. That's a sign that in certain areas of your main drum, you're, um, you're quite compact now and, and almost ready to take that um, bat off. So again, don't worry too much about those. You can take them off or leave them on they'll either get dragged back onto the drum card or at a later stage or um, they'll just remain on here um, for you to take off in your cleaning process afterwards. So, okay, say for example we've got to the stage where we think, oh yeah, that's enough of that bat, I want to take that off. You take your doffing tool, you pass behind the bat and through that metal groove that runs along and pick up as much fibre as you can at one time and then lift. You'll find that they won't, all of the fibres will be quite compact so they won't all sort of come away at once into a sort of perfect tear line. So just gently ease your doffing tool through again and pull that off and sometimes I take the other end and pull. And once they're separated Take this part in your hand, holding it almost like that, like a ponytail, and holding it back so that it sort of lifts off of that top drum, and then ease the, the handle around. If you catch bits like this that aren't quite coming away with the rest of your back, just ease them off with your hands. There's always one little bit that doesn't want to play. <laughs> um, and you just carry on teasing that off until you end up with your bat. Now that's the inside, that's the white base we originally worked with. And then on the other side we have this um, wonderful coloration from all of the different parts of tops that we added to our work. So to, to finish off, take one end, gently roll it, being careful not to get it hooked on your um, drum carder, and roll that into a bat. Now the great thing about a bat 
is that you can use it in several different ways, um, which I will probably show you in a later tutorial. Um, so there you go, there's your art bat made from and tops. I hope you found that helpful and I shall look forward to preparing my next tutorial for you.